What's up guys, and today we're going over the dogfight system, also known as Coyote Guard. Why is it called that? Because he's scared his leg like, like a dog, you know? <laughs> exactly. I consider the dogfight a need-to-know, absolute, essential system to take you from the bottom to the top or take the back. Primarily, you can answer the dogfight from your half guard or quarter guard or to counter knee slide passes. You can use the dogfight system in gi, no gi, MMA, and it's available and entered into all for one specific grip, the underhook. Making it a simple system in the sense that there's a clear objective, get the underhook, get to your knees, and then finish. And to finish, there's a variety of different effective ways, ways to either take the back or sweep. Best of all, you can combo them together so when one isn't working, you can switch to another. I said it's a simple system, but simple does not mean easy, so don't get it twisted. Jujitsu is not easy and the details themselves can be a lot to remember, so I recommend watching this video more than once, taking notes, as well as filming yourself live drilling and comparing the results to this video. This video will be broken down into five main parts. One, how to take an underhook. Two, how to get to your knees. 3. How to finish 4. How to pass after you sweep 5. More context plus a quick recap Taking underhooks So let's get started with details on taking the underhook there's basically two ways to take an underhook, one by leading with your hand and two by leading with your elbow. It's generally safer to lead with your elbow, but it's not wrong to lead with your hand, it's just that there's danger to it. This is because leading with your hand can create space for your partner to take their own underhook or trap your hand and isolate your arm, whereas leading with your elbow and circling in your underhook greatly reduces the risk of these things happening. It's 100% not wrong to lead with your hand, it's just that there's some risk to be aware of. But try to lead with your elbow and circle in your underhook as much as you can. When you take an underhook, you want to make sure that you don't get flattened out onto your back. This is very, very bad. This renders your underhook near useless and makes you susceptible to attacks like Kimura's and back takes. Being on your side with an underhook takes a portion of their weight off of you and helps you pull your partner forward, which we'll cover later why that's important. Let's look at these concepts in real time from Hodger Gracie. He's flattened out on his back with his head controlled. Not good, but once he brings his opponent's weight off of him and he works to get his head free, he now has what he needs to execute the dogfight attack. Whereas before, when he was flattened out, it wouldn't have been possible. If you're attacking the underhook from your knee shield, you need to take your knee shield out first. The knee shield prevents your opponent from bringing their body close to yours, but it also prevents you from bringing your body close to them, which is something that you need to do to take an underhook. So again, it's important to take your knee shield out as you take the underhook. One thing that you can do to shoot an underhooks easier is to flare your knee first. This just gives you a little bit extra space between your opponent's arm and their side, allowing you to shoot an underhooks easier. If you're in a position like quarter guard or defending a knee slide or half guard without a knee shield, patience is key. If they get an underhook on you, it'll help them pass. It's a requirement for a ton of different passes, especially in no gi. So really focus on not letting them get one on you. That's most important. And then when you can, find the opportunity to circle in or insert one for yourself. Again, patience is key. You don't want to lose the grip fight because you couldn't mentally outlast your opponent. If your opponent takes an underhook on you, you've messed up. It's okay to mess up, but we need to address it. What you can do is fake a sweep so they're forced to post out. And once they post, you can circle in your own underhook. You never want to give people underhooks unless you know what you're doing, especially in your guard. As you take underhooks, it's important you don't ignore one of the most important rules of jiu-jitsu and the channel itself. Never let someone grab your head. Head control is great control, and we can't allow someone to get it on us, ever. Instead, monitor your opponent's far arm using your T-Rex arms. Their far arm is the one that would grab your head, so that's the one we need to track. Here's another example of me tracking the far arm to make sure that my opponent can't grab my head. Another way to protect your head and to pull your partner forward is to shoot your arm underneath their hips. This both pulls them forward and you underneath them, which is what you need. One quick tip before moving on is that you can supercharge an underhook by grabbing the far side lapel. In most cases, you'll have to pass it from one hand to another. This is a very powerful grip used for pulling pulling your partner over or yourself up. Hodger Gracie likes to use this as well, like this example from Close Guard. The one con is that it takes extra time to set up, but it's very powerful, so often it's worth it. You can also supercharge an underhook by grabbing the wrist like this, but it can be hard to get. One potential counter that you need to watch out for when you get an underhook is that your opponent may try to backstep, often into either a pass or a leg entanglement. Two things that you can do to counter the backstep are either blocking their leg using your leg or shrimping out and catching their leg with your butterfly hook and taking their back. These are my two favorite ways to counter the backstep, but sometimes you do get caught sleeping or your opponent does a great job and manages to succeed with the backstep. There are things that you can do to deal with this, but it's highly recommended not to get here in the first place. This is dangerous territory as it's a really common and effective saddle entry. Okay, so we know how to get the underhook. Now let's look at how to get to your knees. You 
you need to get your inside leg from the inside to the outside to get to your knees. To do this, you should always be looking to pull people forward so their legs become light. This is because your weight needs to be supported by some area of your body. For example, if you're standing, all your weight is on your feet, and if you're laying down, your weight is spread out evenly. In jiu-jitsu positions like half guard, the majority of the top player's weight will be on their knees and legs if their butt is sitting on their heels. By pulling my partner forward, his weight travels to his arms, his legs become light and no longer pin my legs down, and prevent them from moving freely. The more forward the better, you really want to pull them on you. Not only do you want to pull them forward, but you also want to pull yourself back as well. If you do both motions at the same time, getting to your knees should be easy. Kneeing people in the butt is also a great way to force their weight forward. As you can see in these examples, especially from quarter guard when your opponent is trying to knee slide you, knee them in the butt and get their weight forward. So we know that pulling your partner forward makes it easier to get to your knees because their legs become light, but now let's look at how to actually get to your knees. You can't just pull your leg out or they're going to counter, but we'll cover this more later. Starting from half guard when your opponent's knees are behind your butt, and then looking at quarter guard or defending a knee slide when your opponent's knee is in front of your hips. From half guard, more often than not, you'll want to use the knee torque to get to your knees, where you hook your opponent's leg with your outside leg and turn your hips towards the mat, making sure their knee points away from you and then lifting up slightly to bring your inside leg to the outside. You want to bend their leg and hip into them slightly. This prevents them from turning their knee into you, which we'll look at in a second. You'll need to practice this footwork as it's generally the easiest and most technical way to get onto your knees from half guard, although sometimes you can just get right to your knees without the footwork, but that's more opportunistic from half guard specifically. With the knee torque, you must always be gentle and considerate. I've never accidentally hurt others with this, not once, and I don't think it's a dangerous technique unless the person you're doing it on already has a knee injury. But with that said, some caution is recommended. Just don't overdo it or use jerky motions, you know, just be mindful. When your opponent's knee is in front of your hips like in quarter guard or defending a knee slide, you can just turn your knees towards the mat without the footwork, provided that you have their weight off of you. Look at some of these examples and see how every time I get into my knees once my opponent's weight is forward and no longer on me. One thing that can help you keep your quarter guard is to keep your top leg in front of your bottom leg. This makes it really hard for them to take their leg out. In either position, you must prevent your opponent from turning their knee towards you. You need the knee pointing away. This will make or break the technique. You must keep your opponent's knee pointed away from you or they'll pull you into three quarter mounts and you may get smashed. The knee torque will prevent them from turning their knees towards you as long as you have pressure with your hips. But without the knee torque, you must make sure you pinch your legs together tight and don't let them turn their knee. Regardless of how you get to your knees, you want to make sure you get to the knee torque position when you do get there. You want to end up with their leg between yours with you sitting on it. This is because having their leg trapped will trap them and their whole body as well. If you don't have their leg trapped or you lose it as you get to your knees, your opponent is free to move. Likely they'll turn and face you for the front headlock or they'll stand up. This is also why you can't just pull your leg out from half guard to get to your knees because you won't be controlling their leg. It's not always possible to catch the leg and control it in time, which is part of grappling. There's always variables. If you can't control their leg, you'll want to follow them up to a standing position with the body lock, which is a great position for takedowns anyways. If your opponent is actively trying to get their leg out, cupping their knee will stop them. Especially in nogi, this is often crucial to do. In gi, there's more friction and it's easier to keep their leg using only your legs. But nogi is a slip and slide, so control the knee if you need to and you'll likely need to. Alright, so that was a lot of information before even getting to the fun stuff, the finishes, so let's get started with that. I'm going to show you my favorite ways to finish from the dogfight, how they work, and how to combo and chain them together. An effective dogfight game is all about having answers for all possible reactions and looks from your partner. That's where the dogfight shines. In a perfect world, when you execute the dogfight, your opponent won't overhook. Also known as a wizard, if they don't, you'll have a clear path to the back. This is the least common way to finish because people that are good will overhook if they're able to. However, the more you pull someone's weight forward and force them to post their hands on the mat, the easier it is to execute this. A concept to remember is that from the bottom position, a large majority of the time, the only thing stopping you from taking someone's back is their arm. If you can force them to post their hands on the mat, you'll have a clear path to the back. But again, because people will overhook, this is not often available, so let's look at sweeps and back takes when your opponent does overhook. Post block. Blocking posts to hit sweeps in jujitsu is absolutely nothing new. It's jujitsu 101 and a great place to start for the dogfight. If someone can prevent a sweep by posting their hand, foot, knee, head, or whatever it is on the mat in the direction that they're being swept, then in most cases they will, which might be obvious but is important to be said. 
In the dogfight, there's a variety of ways to block posts, with my go-tos normally being the knee tap or grabbing the ankle. And with the knee tap, you generally either want to cup their knee or you can grab their pants if you're rolling in the gi. Either way, they both have the exact same mechanics. You want to fold your partner's weight over their lower leg. If their foot is sticking out like this, their weight may fall onto their lower leg, which is super dangerous for their knee. It's important to watch out for your training partners and if they're doing something not so smart like this, let them know or wait to proceed. Roll under. This is one of my favorite techniques in all of Jiu Jitsu because it looks so cool and it works so well. One of the best times to go for this is in a combination. When you go for the post block, naturally your opponent will drive back into you to prevent the sweep. You can now use their momentum against them by switching to the roll under. The knee torque is crucial in the roll under as if you don't adequately keep control of their leg, you'll pull them into side control with them on top and you on the bottom. Kind of embarrassing really. Your underhook will remain but your other hand will help you execute the roll. The most common grips are grabbing underneath the hips and grabbing the far leg or or grabbing the pants if they have the gi on. Getting your opponent's weight loaded onto your hips is essential. This is when their weight travels past your center line. When your partner passes this point, they feel almost weightless. To bring your partner over your center line, you either need to use momentum to get there or by walking your hips underneath them. You can do this technique when you're still on the ground and not even on your knees, making it a great tool when you have trouble getting to your knees and you can use this as possibly a quicker option at times. Back take off the force post. Like I said, an overhook stops you from taking someone's back and people will post to avoid a sweep. Like we went over earlier, we can use this to our advantage. Watch how my partner takes his overhook out to post and stop the sweep, giving me a clear path to the back because his arm isn't in the way. All you need to do is direct their weight to the side and be ready for when the overhook comes out. This is one of my favorite dogfight technique chains. It works really well. Arm shuck. Arm shucks feel so good when you hit a clean one. This is a very common wrestling technique and is really simple. All you have to do is make your arm go limp and swipe it in front and around. And now their hand is on the mat, not on you, and now you have the back. Single leg. This is one of my favorite go-tos against big guys especially. What you want to do is lift your outside foot on the floor instead of your knee so you can drive off of it and cup their knee with your hand. Ideally, you want to circle so you walk around them. Once their weight travels past their knee, they're going down. When you do this, you want to keep your weight on them so their weight stays on their knee. If they can get their feet onto the mat, they'll stand up. Again, we don't want them to stand up. We don't want to have to deal with that, although we can. We want to sweep now, so keep their weight on their knee. Here's an example of my opponent not keeping my weight on my knee, allowing me to come up to my feet. Sure, he had the body block, which was great for him, but I countered quickly and I won the match. Whereas if he kept me on the floor, I wouldn't have had that opportunity. The body lock. I don't do this one often, but it is a cool option. You just take a body lock and drive them to the side. It's pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, the magic really happens when you combo or chain these techniques together and have options for every possible look from your opponent. Before we move on, one thing to note is sometimes you need to switch to the legs instead of the underhook. This is often needed when your opponent makes too much space from you, causing you to really reach for their body. In this case, their legs are closer and a better grip. The dogfight may need to be modified or abandoned, or maybe you can continue on like normal. Everything is situational in jujitsu. Here's a great example of my opponent reaching for an underhook on me when my legs would have been a better option because they're closer. Part 4. How to Pass Once You Sweep Sweeping using the system right into side control or with the guard already passed is always ideal but not always possible. If you can't clear the legs as you're sweeping, you want to end up in an ideal passing position instead. That is, with their body facing away from you. With their legs or leg between yours, this is the side smash. A position we cover quite a bit on the channel, and for the side smash, you want to keep your hips down and heavy. You don't want them to adjust their body and get themselves and their legs pointed back towards you. Keep them pointing away and your hips heavy. Now that you have the side smash, you're ready to pass. One highly effective pass that's available is the back step. We talk about back steps all the time on the channel because they work so good. For a successful back step, you want to make sure someone's butterfly hook does not stay on you as you back step, so you'll have to keep their leg pinned down to address this. It can be done with your hand, but it's usually more effective and easier to do with the inside step of your foot, that is if you're passing a side control. But mount is also available. For toe mount, you want to insert your knee between theirs, and one point I really like to stress is to direct your knee downwards and towards your partner's feet. This will kill their movement and power of their legs, and it'll prevent your opponent from entering into a leg entanglement, because they need to bring their body into a ball to off-balance you. The more that you can keep them flat on the back, the better. That means their body will be all twisted up and out of alignment, making them weak and unable to defend. Keeping them flat on the mat can be accomplished using a cross face, either a shallow cross face with your forearm or a deep cross face with your bicep. Now just bring your other knee forward to mount. It's that simple. 
Really quickly guys, I just want to let you guys know it's not everyone is aware of this feature, but you can give a super thanks or a tip to your favorite creators for their hard work and time. YouTube itself pays absolute trash. I'll probably make only about $200 on ads on this video, yet it took me over 40 hours to make. That's why sponsors are absolutely essential for creators to make money. Haters will say I'm begging, but I just wouldn't mind being compensated for my time, that's all. If you do want to treat this instructional as pay what you want, I appreciate it. Liking and commenting is another great way of showing support too. More context plus a quicker view. The majority of this I learned when I was a blue belt watching Lucas Lychee videos as well as figuring out things for myself that work for me along the way. I don't do everything exactly like I initially learned from him. What I do is more similar to what Mika Galvao does. For example, Lucas keeps his elbow on the mat and doesn't really pull his opponent forward, but Mika stresses not to keep your elbow on the mat and he pulls his partner forward, which I do as well, just like Mika. But Lucas is a world champion that specializes in this and popularized the technique, and Mika Galvao is also a world champion, so who's right? Well, Bernardo said it best. So I think there's no like better or worse, it's just like you want, you adapt to better to be able to do it. In Jiu Jitsu, there's often not better or worse, but what resonates and works best for your body type and style. Although sometimes there is better or worse, it's so situational and so subjective. So my point is that I've given you a great starting point for the dogfight and you can absolutely use what you learned here and have great success with it. But there are other finishing options and way of doing it that is different from the way I do it. Or I just didn't include because it would make this video way too long and unnecessarily information packed, which it already is. So let's finish with a quick review. The dogfight is an attack system from your half guard, quarter guard, or way to counter knee slides. You can take the underhook by either shooting it right in or circling it in, leading with your elbow. Once you have it, you want to get to your knees, not by pulling your leg up and out, but to the side if it's available or using the knee to work technique. As you get to your knees, you want to make sure you keep their legs between yours by keeping your heel underneath theirs and sitting on their leg, also cupping their knee if they try to pull it out. Now you can take their back if they don't overhook, or you can block their post to sweep them, often their ankle or their knee. You can also roll under by forcing them to counter the post block. They will likely drive back into you and you'll be able to use the momentum against them. And if you can't get to your knees, you can still go for it. If they post out to stop the sweep, you can pop your head out the back door and take their back. And an arm shock also gives you the back. I especially like circling the single leg to finish. And if you do this, make sure they can't stand up. If you want to upgrade your knee shield game as a whole, I do have an instructional on this with BJJ Fanatics. The link is in the description. I cover the dogfight and a bunch of other high percentage sweeps and subs. Guys, make sure to check out my podcast, Talk Jitsu, on Spotify, Apple Music, or YouTube. I know you're going to like it, so make sure to check it out. All right, thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys make videos like this possible. All right, let me know what technique you want me to break down next, and hopefully it won't take me uh, 40 hours. That'd be nice. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or a fist bump, and I'll see you guys next time.